Welcome to pharmacology mini number six, where we're going to cover antidepressant medications. Antidepressant medications primarily work to increase the availability of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft. It's used to treat depression, bipolar disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, bulimia nervosa, premenstrual dysphoria, panic disorder, PTSD, social anxiety, and generalized anxiety. There's five classes of antidepressant medications, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, or SNRIs, atypic, atypical antidepressants, tricyclic antidepressants, or TCAs, and monoamine oxidase inhibitors, also called MAOIs. We're going to talk about the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and the serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors together because they're very similar chemically and have a lot of the same um, characteristics as each other. So the purpose of a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor is to inhibit serotonin reuptake, which increases the amount of serotonin available at the synaptic cleft. With SNRIs, it inhibits serotonin reuptake as well as norepinephrine reuptake. Both have a half-life that's fairly long compared to other medications. So it takes about one to two weeks before we start to see any therapeutic effects from these medications. And it takes four to six weeks before we see a full therapeutic effect. Typically with any antidepressant, we see the physical symptoms start to improve more quickly than some of the mental or emotional symptoms. So if you have a patient that has suicidal ideation alongside their depression, they may not have the energy or the focus to come up with a plan. However, when they start an antidepressant, after about two weeks, when they start getting more physical energy and focus, they suddenly have that ability to create a plan and carry it out before the mental and emotional effects start to take place. So we do want to especially monitor our patients with suicidal ideation that are starting an antidepressant for those first two weeks of start for any suicidal thoughts or suicidal behaviors because they are going to be at that higher risk between two to four, two to six weeks. Examples of SSRIs include paroxetine, or also called Paxil, Sertaline, called Zoloft, Acetolopram, called Lexapro, Citalopram, which is Celexa, Fluoxetine, which is called Prozac, and Fluvoxamine, which is called Luvox. As you can see, a lot of these medications end in either pram or amine. Um, examples of SNRIs are venaflaxine, also called Effexor, desvenaflaxine, also called Pristique, Diloxetine, also called Cymbalta, and Levomilnesipram, also called Fetisma. The complications of both SSRIs and SNRIs include both acute and long-term side effects and possible adverse reactions. Most acute complications tend to resolve after a couple of weeks. Long-term complications will last a little bit longer. So at initially starting these medications, the patient may have increased nausea and vomiting, diaphoresis, tremors, fatigue, drowsiness, Initial weight loss, even though that can turn into a long-term weight gain, and suicidal ideation. Our long-term symptoms are going to include insomnia, which if our patients are having insomnia from a medication, we would want to make sure that they're taking that medication earlier in the day so that by the time it's run through the body, it won't impact their sleep as much. Um, other long-term effects could include a headache, sexual dysfunction, weight gain, GI bleed, hyponatremia, serotonin syndrome, which is a medical emergency that we'll talk about later, bruxism, withdrawal, postural hypotension, continued suicidal ideation, rash, and blurred vision. For interactions for SSRI and SNRI medications, we wanna know that most of these medications are pregnancy risk category C or D. So most of them are not typically recommended in pregnancy or breastfeeding. These medications do interact quite a bit with herbal supplements. For example, St. John's wort 
is an herbal supplement that's used for treating symptoms of depression along with a lot of other um, ailments and it increases serotonin. So when we combine it with an SSRI or an SNRI, that patient's going to be at higher risk for that medical emergency called serotonin syndrome. Kava is another herbal supplement that interacts with just SNRIs and valerian, which also interacts with SNRIs. All medications that we're going to talk about today tend to interact with MAOIs as well, which are monoamine oxidase inhibitors. And we'll talk a little bit about both serotonin syndrome and hypertensive crisis, which can develop if these medications are taken not only the same time as an MAOI, or but within 14 days of stopping an MAOI. They can interact with tricyclic antidepressants, again, because of that serotonin syndrome. It can interact with antiplatelet and anticoagulant medications. And we wanna be cautious or avoid use in patients that have liver failure, kidney failure, seizure disorders, history of GI bleed, because remember that can be a long-term complication, as well as patients that have bipolar disorder, mania, seizure disorder, a recent myocardial infarction or interstitial lung disease. Moving on to our atypical antidepressants. So these are used to treat depression, smoking cessation, seasonal affective disorder, and ADHD, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. The way that atypical antidepressants work is they tend to inhibit norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake. Examples of these often end in Z-O-D-O-N-E. So our examples are bupropion, which is Welbutrin, Velazidone, which is Vibrid, Mirtazapine, which is Remeron, Nefazidone, which is Serzone, and Trazidone, which can also be called Deseril or Electro. The side effects of atypical antidepressants include anticholinergic effects. So remember, this is things like having a headache, a dry mouth, GI distress, constipation, tachycardia, hypertension, restlessness, and insomnia. If our patients do develop these side effects, we can encourage them to eat or chew sugarless gum, suck on a sugarless candy to kind of help with that dry mouth. For constipation, we would want them to increase their fiber intake, increase fluids, all of that. They can develop nausea and vomiting, so we would encourage them to take the medications with food. It can contribute to anorexia or weight loss. So if you have a patient that has um, too low of a BMI or if they have symptoms of anorexia nervosa, an atypical antidepressant would not be an appropriate medication for them. It can also cause seizures. Trazodone specifically can cause priapism, and trazodone and mirtazapine can cause sedation. So those are typically given more towards um, the evening so it can help the patient with sleep. Contraindications and interactions is that they're all pregnancy risk category B, and they do interact with MAOIs, and vilazidone specifically interacts with grapefruit juice. Then we have our tricyclic antidepressants. So these block reuptake of norepinephrine and serotonin, and they can have the same effect on dopamine sometimes as well. These medications take about 10 to 14 days for start of therapeutic effect and four to eight weeks for full therapeutic effect. The purpose of tricyclic antidepressants is to treat bipolar disorder, depressive disorders, neuropathic pain, fibromyalgia, anxiety, OCD, insomnia, and ADHD. Examples of this include medications that tend to end in pramine. So amitriptyline is Elevil, imipramine is Tofranil, nortriptyline is Pamelor, doxepin, amoxapine, which is Ascendin, trimipramine, which is Sermontil, desipramine, which is norepramine, and clomiprene, which is anaphril. The side effects of tricyclic antidepressants include orthostatic hypotension. So we would wanna educate our patients to make sure that they're getting up slowly and sitting down if they feel any dizziness when changing positions. We can also see those anticholinergic effects that we talked about with the atypical antidepressants. They can develop sedation. So a lot of times these medications will be given in the evening. 
toxicity of tricyclic antidepressants can happen quite easily. So we would want to get a baseline ECG and vital signs just in case it causes any heart arrhythmias. It does decrease the seizure threshold, so they're at increased risk for having seizures. It can cause excessive sweating and that suicidal ideation that I talked about earlier. Contraindications for this medication includes that it is pregnancy category C. We would not give it to any patients that have seizure disorders or a history of a myocardial infarction. And we would want to use it with caution in the elderly, those with CAD, diabetes, liver or kidney failure, respiratory disorder, urinary retention, and that's because of the anticholinergic effects, glaucoma, BPH, or hyperthyroidism. Tricyclic antidepressants also interact with quite a few medications. So we know that it interacts with MAOIs, and again, that can cause both serotonin syndrome as well as hypertension. It interacts with St. John's wort, again, because it can cause serotonin syndrome. Anticholinergic medications, because anticholinergic effects are part of the side effects. Sympatothematics, which can increase dopamine and ephedrine, as well as amphetamines and epinephrine effects. If used with alcohol, it can increase CNS depression. Same thing with benzodiazepines as well as opioids. And we also want, wouldn't want to give it with an antihistamine because that can also cause CNS depression. Ways that we can treat those anticholinergic effects, as I mentioned earlier, we can have them chew sugarless gum or have sugarless candies. They can sip water frequently. We would want to educate our patients to wear sunglasses in the sun, eat foods high in fiber, exercise regularly, drink two to three liters of fluid, and void before taking any medications. And while I have this listed under tricyclic antidepressants, these interventions are appropriate for any medication that has anticholinergic effects as a side effect. We would also want to educate our patients that are taking anti or tricyclic antidepressants to take them at bedtime. And that many of these medications will only be given in a one-week supply because there is such a high risk for suicidal ideation and toxicity. Once the patient is stabilized on these medications and they're not showing any symptoms of suicidal ideation, we can give them a supply that lasts a little bit longer than a week. Then lastly, we have our monoamine oxidase inhibitors. So these block monoamine oxidase enzymes which are enzymes that typically break down norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, and tyramine. So when we block the enzymes that are breaking it down, we're increasing the amount of norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, and tyramine available at the synaptic gap. It does take about two to four weeks for therapeutic effect, and it takes about 14 days for the medication to leave the system when discontinued. So we'll talk about a lot of the interactions that MAOIs have, and we would want to avoid using any of those medications or foods within two weeks of stopping the medication. MAOIs are effective in treating depression, bulimia nervosa, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, OCD, and PTSD. While these are effective in treating all of those disorders, this tends to be a later therapy or a last um, therapy that we would try just because the side effects and the interactions with other medications is so severe. So examples of MAOIs are Nardil, Marplan, Parnate, Eldapril or Zelpar. And this Eldapril or Zelpar, also called Selgoline, um, can be used as a transdermal patch. So side effects is it can cause CNS simulation. It can also cause orthostatic hypotension, hypertensive crisis, and a rash, especially for that transdermal patch. It interacts with sympathetomimetics, which can cause hypertensive crisis. Tricyclic antidepressants also cause hypertensive crisis. It can cause serotonin syndrome by taking SSRIs. Um, it would be contraindicated with antihypertensives. The paridine, it can cause hyperpyrexia. We would want, not want to take it with tyramine rich foods because that can also place the patient in hypertensive crisis. It's contraindicated with vasopressors because that can cause hypertension. 
and it's also contraindicated with general anesthesia. We would want to use caution in pregnancy because it is a pregnancy category C. And we'd also want to use caution with those that have diabetes, seizure disorders, pheochromocytoma, heart failure, CVD, and renal failure. We'd want to stop use for 14 days before starting another antidepressant. And we would also want to educate our patients on any tyramine-rich food so that they can avoid it while taking an MAOI. In addition to all of the antidepressant classes that we talked about, there are some non-antidepressants that we can use to treat depression. Most of these are antipsychotic medications and they include Abilify, which is augmented with SSRIs, Seroquel, which can also be used for anxiety, sleep, depression, and bipolar disorder, Rixalti, which is an adjunctive therapy for resistant types of depression, so those are types of depression that haven't responded to antidepressants. If we add this Rexalti to it, it can help with treatment. There's Vrylar, which is helpful for bipolar mania as well as mixed bipolar. Latuda, which is helpful for bipolar depression. And Trintelix or Brintelix. So now onto those medical emergencies that I talked about. There's two main ones that we think about when we talk about antidepressant medications. And that's serotonin syndrome, which is common with almost all forms of antidepressants, and hypertensive crisis, which is particularly risk when we take MAOIs. So for serotonin syndrome, this is when toxic levels of serotonin develop. This is from combining different medications that increase serotonin with herbal supplements, or it can happen with any dose changes to a medication that increases serotonin. We typically start seeing symptoms within two to 72 hours of treatment. The symptoms range from mild to severe, with mild symptoms being agitation, restlessness, insomnia, confusion, tachycardia, hypertension, dilated pupils, muscle twitching and rigidity, sweating, diarrhea, headaches, shivering, and goosebumps, and more severe symptoms being extreme fever, tremors, seizures, arrhythmias, coma, and death. Our treatment when our patient develops serotonin syndrome is to stop the medication that's increasing the serotonin level and treat them symptomatically. So to stop the medications, we could also give a serotonin receptor blockade to try and lower that serotonin level. Symptomatically, we can provide them with cooling blankets so they don't develop hyperthermia. We can give them anticonvulsants to try and prevent any seizure activity. And we can provide artificial ventilation and resuscitation if necessary. Then hypertensive crisis is a common reaction to MAOIs when taken with tyramine or other medications. So I mentioned earlier that we would want to educate our patients on tyramine-rich foods. So these are foods that are aged cheeses, smoked meats, avocados, figs, fermented fruits, protein supplements, red meats, soy sauce, and alcohol. Symptoms of hypertensive crisis include headaches, nausea, tachycardia, blood pressure greater than 180 systolically and 120 diastolically, stroke, and possible death. The treatment for this is regatine IV or procardia, which can be given sublingual. We would want to do telemetry monitoring and cardiorespiratory support. And that wraps up our mini lecture on antidepressant medications.